Hi Internet, uh, this is James Wilson with Aesthetic Training Solutions. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about carbohydrates, how they work in your body, um, how they can work for you or against you depending on what you choose to do with your training and with your nutrition. Um, right off the bat though I want to say that this little demonstration that I'm going to be doing for you is going to be for the vast majority. Uh, obviously there's going to be exceptions to the rule, not everyone is going to be entirely the same, but for most people this actually rings very true. Um, and we'll be discussing adaptions a little bit to help further uh, kind of emphasize the point in how all of this works. So when, when we consume carbohydrates, I know there's a lot of information that's just like don't eat white carbs, don't eat white bread, don't eat white rice. And those things aren't necessarily bad for you. Um, it's obviously in our best interest to consume whole nutritious foods that are going to have a symphony of micronutrients. And this just assures that you are getting all of the nutrition that your body needs at a cellular level. Um, but there, there does come a point when um, especially with fiber, like we need a minimum of 25 grams of fiber per day. Ideally 25 to 30, 35 for females. Males it's going to be like 30 to 37, 38 grams. Um, once we start pushing fiber up really high because carb grams are really high, it actually ends up being a negative for us because it's going to block certain nutrients from being able to be absorbed. So there is a time and a place for those white carbs. Um, so when you consume a carb, and it doesn't matter if it is barley or sweet potatoes or you know any kind of a whole grain, or if you consume table sugar, eventually it's all going to break down into either glucose, glucose or glycogen. Um, glucose is going to go to your liver. Your liver kind of houses the glucose so that uh, you know, it, it can release blood sugars for your vital organs like your brain. So obviously your liver is not going to be very big so that a whole lot isn't going to be stored in your liver. Your next option is going to be your muscle tissue and we're going to use these sponges as kind of an example because um, carbs they break down into blood sugar and the ideal places initially for carbohydrates is your liver and in your muscle belly. Now, when we consume excess energy for our need, that is when we are going to store body fat. And I'm going to kind of demonstrate that. So we're going to use water to demonstrate that. And this bowl is going to help keep me from getting wet, but also going to represent kind of a fat storage bowl. So we consume a carbohydrate. Now let's say that, you know, if, if we're consuming the carbohydrate really slow, um, it's going to be like a low glycemic carbohydrate. So let's say you're having your bowl of oatmeal, right? So you have sponge and see how I, I ate that. There's no spillover. And then here, you know, I'm, I'm pouring it, I'm pouring it. And there's still, there's nothing that's going to fat storage because the muscle is absorbing all of that carbohydrate. Now what happens is, let's say that you have your bowl of oatmeal and it's a really big bowl. So your body naturally, as you can see, just kind of uses energy throughout the day. This is just normal. So this isn't fat storage. This is just you utilizing your energy throughout the day. So you know, you have your meal and you're utilizing energy and everything's really good. And then you have another meal and see, no fat storage. But then again, you know, you're using energy, and this is just, this could be you just sitting at a computer. Your body still needs to utilize energy. Um, when you exercise, it's like you're really blasting through and depleting that energy. So when you exercise, it's actually okay to have sugars because sugars is gonna be more rapid, but you're still, it's not going to fat storage because you're, you're refeeding or refueling that depleted glycogen from the muscle belly. Now where people get in trouble is they have a huge meal, right? 
and then they're still eating carbohydrates and everything and this is when you're getting fat storage see how that works because you're consuming excess sugars or excess food beyond what your muscle belly can actually retain so insulin then spikes and you get fat storage now if you are eating in a deficit right you're working out and everything like that then your body's going to dip into fat storage if you are in a deficit and pull that and obviously you know you're wringing that out you're burning those excess calories and then you know you're refueling a little bit but hey it's still not enough so your body's then dipping into fat storage and you're burning it off and this is how you lose fat see pretty simple principle um, now here's something that I think is really important to understand um, whenever we are in a dieting phase right you are always going to be putting a little bit of stress on your body and while yes you're going to be losing fat you're also going to be stripping a little bit of muscle um, that's just kind of the nature of when you were dieting um, our bodies only want to maintain as much muscle as it sees as necessary for survival and I think that is a huge point that we all need to understand um, so you have you have really two types of muscles you have well if there's more than that you have your type we're just gonna say type 1 and type 2 muscles I mean you have different breakdowns within those for explosive measures but we're just gonna keep it simple you have your slow twitch and you have your fast twitch your slow twitch are gonna be your cardio muscles those are the ones that they are slow to fatigue and then you have your fast twitch which are faster to fatigue but they are going to be uh, burning the most energy and the most calories and this is from your resistance training um, so what happens is that like if this was your muscle tissue right and you're dieting your body's going to learn to adapt to survive with less and some muscle is going to get stripped you are going to lose muscle so as you can see if this is where you were and you've been heart you've been dieting for a long time this is now the muscle that you have so yes you lost weight congratulations but you've also slowed down your metabolic rate now where this becomes a problem is this sponge could manage more total food than obviously this one so calories have to come down your body learns to adapt and becomes more efficient with less total food and the same amount of activity that's not necessarily a good thing um, so we're going to talk about now how you kind of go about retaining as much muscle or how you can also lose more muscle. So let's say that you were this individual and you are afraid of resistance training because it's going to make you bulky. Um, what's going to happen is if you are just doing cardio specifically and not resistance training, then, you know, your, your body's going to take and you're gonna you're gonna go for a run right let's say that you're one of those people that you're dedicated you're gonna run a marathon and kudos to you for wanting to run a marathon I would never want to run a marathon it just sounds like too much pain on my knees and hips um, anyways what happens is you can only hold so much carbohydrate glucose glycogen energy right so as you go on your runs you go through and you deplete your glycogen Okay, glycogen is all gone, but you're still, you're only on mile seven and you still have several miles that you need to put in. So what is your body gonna do? And everyone thinks, oh, it's gonna dip into fat stores. No, here's a principle you absolutely need to realize. Fat is oxidized over many hours and days. It is not like this on off switch, like, oh, ran out of carbs, we're gonna start pulling from fat doesn't work that way your body's gonna raise cortisol it's gonna be stressed and it's going to start stripping amino acids and converting it to sugar via gluconeogenesis so as you're running all you're doing is just taking and stripping that muscle away and it just goes and goes and goes and you're stripping it away and you're stripping it away and eventually you're you're literally shaving off 
your muscle tissue and you're shaving off your potential to hold more food and you're also shaving off your ability. So example, let's say that we strip some more muscle, right? This much muscle is now gone. You now have less that you can fuel without it spilling over. And then when you do burn, utilize that, and let's say that you do burn fat, if this is your fat remaining, you're going to absorb less than if you had that muscle still remaining as part of your system. Okay? Now, where we have a huge problem is the people that they dramatically cut carbs and they dramatically cut, uh, they don't do any resistance training, they're just doing cardio, and especially lots of cardio. Um, instead of having muscle tissue like this, you're gonna start getting muscle like this. Now with this, as you can see, you pour it in and it's like, man, it just seems like if I eat a slice of bread, I gain fat. Have you ever said that before? Well, this is because you have taught your body to not need any food. You don't have any muscle mass. You have no way to retain any of the energy because you don't have any muscle. This is the worst possible scenario that you can be in. Do not starve yourself and don't carb starve yourself, right? You need to do resistance training. The cardio is not the answer. Stop listening to your doctor that's uninformed or your trainer that's uninformed that keeps telling you this principle of, oh, don't lift weights, do cardio and eat 1200 calories. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's just making things worse. Now, what happens when you go to try to, to burn it? Like, okay, well, cool, how was that workout? You didn't burn anything. There's no fat that's lost with that. I mean, look at this. I mean, there's nothing there, right? And then you get frustrated and you're like, oh, I'm gonna have my cheat meal. And so you blow it up. There, I ran out of water. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? You blow it up and you don't have anything. You don't have anything, right? So then there's this problem, I just, I guess I'm just destined to be fat or I haven't found the right diet yet or whatever. And you just keep gaining fat and gaining fat and gaining fat because you don't have any muscle tissue. Now, how do you retain muscle tissue? It's through resistance training. It's through lifting weight. Lifting weights is, it's going to impact your metabolism so much. Now, we have this really big sponge here, and this is going to represent a bodybuilder, right? Now, um, well, I know I'm gonna use that, Katie. Just click the video for a second. And we're back. So I filled up the water bottle <laughs> so I could demonstrate this right. So we're gonna say that this is a bodybuilder, right? Um, check out his potential. Now, mo most people just think, oh, that bodybuilder's using steroids, that's why he's so big. You guys, you, and girls, you don't understand. Like, uh, <laughs> they work so hard. They are the hardest working people. Those, those bodybuilders that are cheating, yes, steroids are going to help them, but they still have to eat, and they're eating just so much food. So much food. And they are training at a level and intensity that all the people that sit there on their cell phones wondering why they're not getting results don't understand. Like when you are in pain from an exercise and you stop, they continue and continue and continue and rep and then drop set and rep and drop set and rep and drop set and rep. And you stop at two, three sets and they're doing six and eight sets. Like they work so hard. Now, when they go eat a meal, they're eating tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons. And look how much is spilling over into fat. None. And when they go work out, it's like for energy, right? Because they're pushing, they're deadlifting 600 pounds. They're leg pressing 1,500 pounds. And they're doing this for six and eight sets. Like they're squatting 
more than for they're squatting for repetition like 20 reps more than you or me or so many other people can squat for a single rep like these people are just powerhouses right and they eat and it's just there's not much going to fat because they require so much sneaking food then let's say when they start to go into their diet phase they're like yeah i drop calories and you know i add some cardio and like if if this was their fat amount well, let's actually pour some more in here because you're going to get the concept here so this is where they are off season right and they go and they start dieting and they absorb and burn so much more fat and they just blow through that and yes they're dieting so they're gonna lose some muscle but look how much of a problem that is for them still blowing through calories and still absorbing and taking their fat storage and going through do you see how that works it's from resistance training the more muscle you have the greater your capacity and ability will be to burn fat when you carb starve and you don't resistance train and you eat nothing your potential to gain fat will be massive and your potential to lose fat will be nil because you don't have a metabolism muscle is metabolism cardio takes away your metabolism yes i understand cardio has its benefit and its need however it should be our goal to get as far as we can towards our progress with as little cardio as possible because cardio is going to pull yes from fat stores but it's also going to strip muscle it's going to take from your type 2 fast twitch muscles to feed especially if you're doing gobs and gobs and gobs of cardio cardio is easy anyone can go run and I know this point is gonna frustrate a lot of people but you're not challenging yourself with basic jogging walking cardio you need to challenge yourself like go challenge yourself there's nothing scary about a gym it's really it's just metal and you move it it's really you have to command that and it's like well I don't know what to do well there's lots and lots of things uh, aesthetic training solutions to help you be able to learn how to do this it's all set up and broken so all you have to do is do it that's it but you have to overcome that fear and you need to go to the gym and if you do that you're gonna build more muscle which makes it so you can eat more food which is really good and it's gonna make it so you can burn more calories and you want to lift heavy getting to the bodybuilder size like it's not it is not an easy thing Ben Pikulski said it best when he's like you know people think oh it's easy I could do that with steroids I could do that no you can't you can't do what he does I've been trying to do what he does being a bodybuilder and get huge for 15 years and it's not gonna happen for me I mean he's a lot shorter I'm 6'3 he's like 5'6 5'7 and that's gonna make a difference but I don't think I don't think people truly understand the difficulty it is to gain muscle and you know I'll see people who's like oh I gain muscle really fast okay here's gonna answer this question if you are someone that gains muscle really fast you would be able to let's say you're starting off with a bench press and you can only do 100 pounds and then the next week you're doing 130 pounds and then you know a month later you're benching 200 pounds and then another month later benching 300 pounds like that's gaining muscle fast you have to learn the difference between gaining muscle and gaining weight gaining weight fast is a totally different thing if you don't have much of a metabolism because you've stripped it away with your low cardio or your high cardio and your low carb and your low calorie diets you'll gain weight fast you're not gonna be gaining muscle fast here's the thing don't be afraid of carbs they're not bad you just have to eat for what your metabolic capacity and ability is and it's important to understand that we can't be in a constant diet phase like this whole process needs to be cyclical in nature when you start out and you diet you're going to strip muscle 
So then it is imperative that after a certain time when the body really starts or it stops responding, if you will, to, you know, you're, you're doing a fairly lower calorie. And I'm not talking 1200 calories unless you weigh 90 pounds. Um, if, if, you're, if you're 200 pounds, you really shouldn't be consuming less than 2000 calories. If you ever get below your current body weight times 10 for calories, you need to stop dieting and you need to reverse diet. And you need to take your metabolism and bring it up and adapt your body to needing more food and increasing muscle and increasing strength. So that way, when you go back to diet, you can actually shed the weight. And with proper reverse dieting, you can do it without gaining any weight. You're just bringing up your metabolic rate. And then you can diet. And it's a cyclical process until you get where you want to go. And that's just kind of how all of that works. Anyway, just be smart with your training. And by training, I mean lifting. Don't just think, oh, I'm gonna go burn some calories. That's the wrong mindset. Train. Train to be more capable for anything outside of the gym. You, when, when you are training, don't just get on a machine and be like, okay, well, I heard that I want to lift, you know, for 15 to 20 reps because, you know, I don't want to get bulky. And then, so you're like, okay, and you get on a machine and you start working it and you get to rep 15 and you stop. When your load is somewhere that you could easily do 30 reps with, you need to push your limits. You really need to try. You need to get to the point where, okay, if I'm doing 15 reps, those last one, two, three reps are a struggle and your brain is saying, hey, you need to be done. And you're like, no way brain, I'm gonna make this happen. And you, you command it. You need to be masters at commanding your thoughts and your actions. That is key. And push your limits. It's okay to fail, especially on a machine. If you're gonna be on like a barbell bench press, like, yeah, go ahead and rack the weight. You need to have a level of safety. But if you're on a machine, rep until you cannot rep a single rep. And if you're like, oh man, I did 25 reps, increase the load. You're not gonna get bulky. Remember, if you wanna burn through more calories, push your limits, really push it. The more muscle you have, the greater your metabolic rate. And the better your body's gonna utilize carbs without gaining fat. See how that works? Awesome. Um, thank you for watching this. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please comment uh, on my Facebook page with any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms. I welcome it all. I want to help you. And yeah, let's do this. Okay, let's go.